Hi students, welcome to Year 11 Biology and the first module, Cells as the Basis of Life. This is video number six and we're going to focus in on cell organelles and technology. In this case, we're going to try and again focus in on some of the differences between prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells by comparing and contrasting different cell organelles and arrangements. Now, one thing to just quickly say here is the fact that both of these terms have been used means we're going to be looking at similarities as well as differences in the cell organelles and arrangements and we're going to be doing that not just between prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells but also between different members of the eukaryotic group such as plants and animals. In previous videos, we looked at the development of the electron microscope, the fact that it uses a beam of electrons rather than light in order to produce the image. And that means we can have much higher resolution and much higher magnification, which has allowed us to look at the cells in so much more detail than we did before. So this meant we were able to see some of these very, very small structures that are present inside of cells. And it started to give us an opportunity to develop our understanding of the differences between prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells. As the development in microscopy um, grew, so our understanding of uh, cells changed. And as a result, we were able to start to have a little list of um, the key components in each of these different types of cells. And what I'm going to be doing through this video, and, um, and I've structured in such a way that it will be a little bit longer, but it means you can stop it at different stages and um, add to your table, put the table together, and obviously um, also add to it from any of the slides uh, or uh, experiences that you're having in class too. So build up a nice picture of the different organelles that are present in uh, each of the different groups. So you'll notice, of course, with the prokaryotic cells that we don't have membrane-bound organelles. We do have ribosomes. We do have DNA present, but it's uh, in, the f in a, a disorganized form in what's often referred to as a nucleoid because it's not a nucleus uh, as, as we would see in eukaryotic cells, but the DNA is still present. Um, we do have a plasma membrane or a cell membrane around the cytoplasm. We do have uh, often a cell wall and or a capsule that sort of encloses uh, the different prokaryotic cells and, and perhaps other structures that are attached to the outside like the pili uh, or the flagelli, which we've looked at before. Here's the start of this table in prokaryotic cells. We have a plasma membrane, we have a cell wall, uh, a nucleoid, which is where the uh, DNA is. We have ribosomes, which we've seen before and talked about before, and also those structures that are on the outside. What you can do is go through and look at each of these uh, one at a time. The plasma membrane we will look at in a subsequent slide. Um, because that is a more complex structure. But even if you just at this stage um, just describe these in very general terms to help you build up um, an idea of what each of these structures look like so you could recognize them again in a diagram, but also something about how they function. One very important function of the plasma membrane isn't just that it's a kind of a bag to keep the contents in, it's also an exchange center. It allows certain material to come into the cell and move out of the cell, but not everything. So we call that semi-permeable, which just means it's a selective membrane that allows some, some substances to come through and some not. And sometimes that's just on the basis of size, very large molecules won't. Uh, be able to fit through the, that membrane. So the second one we want to do is have a look at uh, examples of eukaryotic organisms. And when we start to look at uh, animal cells, then we start to see some quite clear differences between our prokaryotic cells and our eukaryotic cells. We still have the cell membranes that we had. We also have structures on the outside, in this case, cilia or microvilli. But you can see this very important membrane-bound structure here, the nucleus. And as our uh, electron microscopy developed, um, it wasn't just bacterial cells that we could see in more detail, it was also these eukaryotic cells that we could see in a lot more detail as well. And you can see, um, if you compare them to some of the cells that we've looked at in class already, these are very much more complex in terms of what's going on inside each of these cells. 
And that's where we started to learn a little bit more about the organelles that were present inside of each of these cells. And so that's what we want to do is have a bit of a closer look at each of these to see if we can identify some of these really key structures. So here's a generalized diagram. And I think one of the things that's quite useful before all of the um, labels go on to everything is that you start to get a bit of an idea about one of the different key structures that are present uh, in both um, plant cells and animal cells, the similarities and differences, and also how they compare with prokaryotic cells as you start to, to familiarize yourself with all these different types of cells. But what we can do is we can fill another section in on our table. Now we're looking at animal cells with our eukaryotic cells. A couple of things we didn't see. We didn't see any chloroplasts and we'll see them coming up. We didn't see a cell wall either. And that is a difference between animal cells and plant cells. And also uh, we've seen a number of the prokaryotic cells that also have a cell wall. Uh, a couple of these other structures that are present there, lysosomes, as you saw in previous slides, very important for cellular digestion. They kind of um, break down a lot of the chemicals that the cell no longer needs, uh, the mitochondria we talked about, and also that endomembrane system of, of rough and smooth endoplasmic reticulum, the Golgi bodies, and so on. Now, if we compare the animal cell to a plant cell, um, you can see a lot of similarities. Hopefully, uh, without the labels, you can still identify the nucleus, the nucleolus, uh, rough and smooth endoplasmic reticulum, the ribosomes, the mitochondria. But now there are structures that we didn't see before. Um, this huge thing in the middle here, uh, and also some structures that were not visible in the animal cells. And so there are some differences between plant cells and animal cells. And so what you see very importantly are structures like vacuoles and chloroplasts, which are present in plant cells that are not in animal cells. Animal cells may contain vacuoles, they're little storage areas within the cell. Um, but if they are there, they're usually very small. In plant cells, they can be very large and they can kind of dominate the, the cell. Um, probably not quite to the extent that we've shown here, but that kind of a thing. Um, so this again gives you a little bit of an idea of the um, whole compare contrast. What do you notice in a plant cell that you also saw in the animal cell? What's missing in terms of um, being present in one and not the other? And that's our contrast. And for the plant cell, there are certainly a couple of structures that are present in the plant cell that are not present in the animal cell. So once again, we can go back to our table and to fill in the key components that we find in the plant cells, but not in the animal cells. And what you'll notice here, of course, is plants are autotrophic. They photosynthesize. They're capable of producing their own food and they need chloroplasts to do that. So the chloroplasts are present in the plant cells, but not in the animal cells. Likewise, we have things like vacuoles, which we could also add. And of course, um, when I've put the um, table together. I've simply made this a, a representative table. You can certainly add to it and build as many um, rows as you like in this table. And again, um, you might talk about the fact that they're small uh, storage for animals and large uh, for plants. So the function um, is always going to be similar, usually, not always, but usually the function is going to be similar because the structures are tied to the function, but sometimes it's the number, the distribution, and or the presence and, or absence that allows us to compare and contrast cells in this way. Now that gives us a little overview of the different types of organelles, but we will need to look at each of these in a little more detail and see if we can tease out the actual function of each of these different organelles, um, as well as um, how that function is related to the specific structures. But I'll save that for another video. Thanks for watching.